In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating a very simple Gradle project for Java to demonstrate how Gradle can automatically compile and test our Java project and how it can go out to the internet to fetch libraries for us that our project depends on. So first of all, let's create a directory for our project. And let's cd into it. Now, Gradle projects for Java, like Maven projects, have a common directory structure. So there is a directory called source, inside which there's a directory called main, inside which there's a directory called Java. And that's going to contain the Java source code for our project. Inside the source directory, there's also a directory called test, inside which there's a directory called Java. And that's going to contain the unit tests for our project. Okay, so now we've created the basic directory structure, we need to create build.gradle, which is going to define how our project should be compiled and built. Gradle is a fairly generic uh, build system structure that is uh, based on the Groovy language and it has lots of different pro uh, plugins but we are doing a Java project so we are going to want to apply the Java plugin. And the next thing we're going to want to do is to tell Gradle uh, about our dependencies and how to go and get them. Now these dependencies are going to be stored in repositories out on the internet where uh, people publish libraries. And so first of all we need to tell Gradle which repositories it should look in. And I'm just going to use one called Maven Central which is a particularly well-known repository that is already known to the Java plugin. And now I'm going to declare the dependencies for the this project. And there's, there's different kinds of dependencies that you can have. If you can imagine, your code could be built using a particular library, in which case that's a compile time dependency, because to compile your code, the compiler needs to have that library. But in this case, our code itself isn't going to depend on JUnit. It's just that the tests for our project are going to depend on JUnit. So it's not that to compile our project we need JUnit, it's to compile the tests for our project we need, we need JUnit. So this is a test compile dependency. And when uh, libraries are published to these repositories on the internet, they are published with particular metadata so you can find them. And this one has the group name of JUnit, and it has the artifact name of JUnit and we're going to use version 4.11. So now we've declared a basic Java project, but it's not got any code in it and it's not got any tests in it. So if I go Gradle test, it's going to have very little to do. Uh, I've already run Gradle test on this laptop, so actually it's already gone and fetched JUnit and it's already cached it locally. Oh, except of course I've got an error in my project. Haha, -ha, this demonstrates that this is recorded live. Uh, line three, what went wrong? A problem occurred evaluating root project proj could not find method repositories and that's because I've misspelt it. So let's go and fix my typo. Repositories, not repositories. And now if I run that, we should see it has very little to do. I'll leave that error in because that way you get to see in the video what happens when Gradle fails. Okay, so the build is successful, very little to do because it's already got the library and there's nothing to compile and there's nothing to build. So let's now go and give it some source code to compile. And let's do the uh, typical greeter example and we'll just do it in the default package. So public class greeter and I am just going to create a static method returns a string called greeting that takes a name return hello name so let's save that 
And now there's some stuff that uh, Gradle could compile for us. So let's try running the um, compile Java target, which should compile our Java programs. And we'll see if I put any typos into the Java source. No, okay, build successful. Uh, but at the moment there's no unit tests, so if I go Gradle test, it should have very little to do. I've just compiled the Java, so it doesn't need to do that, and there's no test there to run. Okay, let's now go and give it a unit test. Now I'm using JUnit for the test, so I'm going to need to import some of the JUnit classes. So import org.junit.test import org.junit.assert for the moment and public class greeter test. Now the way I declare a unit test is I need to declare a method of let's avoid and we'll call this one test Fred. You'll see why in a moment. And I need to annotate that method with the annotation test that I just imported up here. So here we have import org.junit test, and here is my method, and I've annotated it as a test. And so that means that when it uh, when I run the tests, it should find this test and it should run it. And this test, I'm going to say string result is greeter dot greeting for Fred. Now that should say, hello Fred. So let's check that it does. So we're gonna go assert dot assert equals, and what I expect it to say is hello Fred. And what I'm testing is that result. So now I've declared a unit test. And hopefully, unless I've made any mistakes, Gradle test will find that unit test and run it for me. build successful. So there we go, it's run our test and it's passed. Now if I go across to my project in uh, my file browser, I should see that as well as the source directory, which contains main test and my uh, Java code, there's also a directory here called build and this is where Gradle is putting its output. And in here, in classes, main, there's where it's compiled the uh, greeter.java to greeter.class, and there's where it's compiled greeter test.java to greeter test.class. But we've also got test results containing some data, and we've got reports, and reports, tests, and in here, there's an index.html file. Let's open that up. And here it is test summary, one test, duration, five milliseconds, 100% successful. Uh, it's in the default package, and it has passed and it was in the class greeter test and if i click on that test read there's the test and it has passed so gradle has now dealt with ensuring that junit is on my computer so that it and on the class path so that it can run the test it's dealt with compiling my java it's dealt with compiling my unit tests and it's dealt with running my unit tests and generating a nice little html report that i can look at so this is an incredibly simple java project in Gradle so that Gradle can compile my project, run the tests, and can also automatically fetch the dependencies that I declare.